All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for coming out on a chilly night. Try to warm your neshama with some davening here. Okay. Uh, I believe we left off uh, in our last discussion with the end of Kabbalah Shabbos, which would have been Hashem Malach. Now, did we talk about Bam Malikim at all? Or did we not? Be? Okay, good. So let's start with Bam Malikim. Um, Bam Malikim is fairly straightforward. Um, you should just be aware of a few things. First, because this is the first major Nusel difference that we're going to bump up against. Uh, Nusel Sfard does Kigabna, while Nusel Hashemaz does Bama Malikin. So let me just talk broadly about Nusel Hashemaz and Nusel Sfard. Um, there are really three major variants that you'll come across. There'll be Nusel Hashemaz, Nusel, Nusel Sfard, and Nusel Hari. And Nusel Hari is used most often by Chabad Kihilos, but there are other kilos that also use variations, slight variations on Nusel Hari. Uh, here's my quick piece of advice for Nusel uh, Svard if you're a native Ashkenaz Davener or vice versa. If, it's, if you're comfortable with the Amud and if you're comfortable with Hebrew words, go for it. If not, probably not a good idea. Spend some time practicing. Um, because inevitably what will happen is, is you'll just be getting into like some part of a tune or some part of dotting that's really familiar to you from this Hashemaz and you'll like rise up and, and your voice will be all swelling and you'll be so eager to belt it out and then suddenly there's all these extra words there and like, oh my gosh, what do I do with them? So it, it can be a little uncomfortable and then it can sort of throw your mental game. So I highly recommend if you're not, uh, again, either one, um, comfortable, um, Comfortable with like the Nusach overall, and then uh, comfortable with the Hebrew words and being able to you know use Hebrew uh, fluidly. So back, that's the overall uh, piece of advice. Um, this this Abam uh, Malikin portion, uh, like I said, I'm sorry. You turned it on, right? Did I turn it on? I think I did. Just to make sure, counting, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good. Oh, wait sorry. A Is it? No, I didn't. It's okay. That's so embarrassing. Okay, I'll, I'll record it later. It's on. okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yes. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, Baba Malikin is going to be the first instance in which there's going to be a major difference in Nusach. So, Nusach Sfar is going to do Kigavna, and Nusach Ashkenaz is going to do Baba Malikin. Not only that, here's a great example of Nusach Hari also. Nusach Hari actually doesn't end with Benihiru Da'anpin Velomar, which is what Nusach Sfar does. They, I think, end a little bit earlier and they go into Kaddish. So it's important if you are about to go into a sparred situation, and again, you're comfortable overall with the Nusa, and you're comfortable with the Hebrew language, but you're not sure exactly how they do things, ask, always ask the Gabbai. Like when they come over to you, they'll let you know. I actually just had a situation like this two weeks ago. I happened to be at a Chabad Minyan, and before I went up there, I asked the Gabbai, and he pointed out, oh, we do this, we don't do that, and it made things a lot easier. So that's Bama Malikin, and Nusach Svar and Nusach Ashkenaz. Any questions about the Ashkenaz Svar and Ari dynamic? Okay. You're talking, you're talking about the words at this point rather than the tune. No. So I'll tell you, when it comes to uh, Nusach Ashkenaz and Nusach Svar, generally we use the same tunes. I am not aware of any variations in tunes between Nusach Ashkenaz and Nusach Svar. Uh, there are a few Chabad Nikunim that they always do. Unless you're um, doing Eidu HaMizrach, in which case... Right, but Eidu HaMizrach, that's an entirely different ball game. So there's like, apparently there's this sport that Canadian play that they like to call football. It's on a 110-yard field, and it's got all these other variations. But I guess that would be a fair enough analogy to American, you know, American football and Canadian football, and that's what Ashton has um, the, the difference between football and what they call football in Europe, or in Israel, is basically the difference between Eidu Ha Mizrach, or the Sephardic Nusuk, and what we do. It is totally different. I would never get up there. I mean, even sometimes I'll dive in Mincho, like I'll be walking into Mincho here and I'll hear banging on the window. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is somebody being robbed? Like, what's going on? And they're just asking me to come upstairs for this Sephardic minion. And I, won't, I don't want to dive in for them because I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to you know, break their Mincho, and I don't want to do that. Um, so it's just uh, something to be aware of. It's very different. They sit different places than we sit. They, yeah. they uh, you know, have an entirely different form of music, and they have that wild, snake-charming 
type of singing, which is really impressive. I wish I could do that. Uh, okay, so uh, we were talking about Vamalikan. Okay. So uh, basically, what you're going to do is at the end of Vamalikan, you're just going to say the last few words. So I usually start from Lamana Chai uh, even though they have over here Shalom Rav. I told you normally, I always stick with where whatever the, the arts girl has that little diamond, um, but it's a lot for something that doesn't really have much music. So I usually start with Everybody stands, and then there is Kaj. We're now at Mariv. Um, Mariv... Can I ask a question about Kaj? Sure. Uh, normally, the chasm says "Vimur Amen" and everybody responds "Amen." Yeah. On um, Berichu, would everybody say Berichu as soon as he says "Zakucha," or would they wait for him to say Berichu before they say Berichu, or does it matter? Uh, okay. So, really, the, the way you're supposed to do it is you say "Bishadar, Bishalat, Bishalal, Oshmei Zakucha," and then you wait, and then you all say Berichu together. Okay. Yeah, that's sort of the proper way to do it. Um, so, it's not something that should be responsive to Zakucha. Because if you think about it in terms of the words, Everybody's what saying we're saying is that you know we're talking about Hashem's descriptions, and then we say all these forms of description of these appellations should apply to Shmei de Kucha, right. his holy name, and we all say Berithu. Right. right. Okay. Uh, but that's uh, that's on main, you're, they're saying Benamar main, and then you say Amen. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, we are now up to Barhu. Before. I begin with Barhu, uh, because this is going to be the first of the formal tefillos that we're discussing here. I think it's helpful to be able to create for yourself a thumbnail sketch of what Marav is, so that way you know where you're, you are at all parts. I remember where this got really tricky for me was with, as I mentioned, I davening the Yom and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The truth is, even Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur davening are like every other davening, structurally. It seems when you're, you know, there with a mobster that it's just like these words and words and words and words that we just have to get through. But actually, it, it follows very much the same sort of format that we normally do. There's Shmon Asrei, there's the repetition. We do throw in Piyutim and other things, but the structure is very similar. So the structure of Marv is essentially Shma and Shmon Asrei. That's pretty much what it is, Shma and Shmon Asrei. Added to Shma, the Gemara says, the Mishnah says, there are two brachos before and two brachos afterwards. <clears throat> so we're going to have the two brachos before Shema, we're going to have Shema, as we do with every marv, and then the two brachos after Shema. On Shabbos, there are a couple of additions, and I'll uh, point this out when we get that we do, we say the Shamru all together, uh, or in the case of a Yom Tif, we'll say by Dabra Moshe, uh, or you know, Tiku and so on. Uh, and then after davening, we do the bracha me'en Sheva, uh, which is the Magenavos and so on and so forth, by Hulu and Magenavos. Um, but really, again, structurally, it's Shema, Shema Nesrei, two brachos, Shema, two brachos, Shema Nesrei, and then Elena. A uh, helpful little tip. Okay, the, the Baruch Hu uh, for Marv uh, goes as follows. And uh, let me just point out, I'm going to be using Hashem's name in all the davening that I do here. Uh, the reason why is because it's Islamic, the Islamic, Sakalach is that if you're teaching, you're allowed to use Hashem's name. Uh, I'll tell you where I have seen this used uh, or not used in a, a really embarrassing way. You've probably seen this as well. You have this little bar mitzvah kid who's been practicing his parsha basically since he was six, and he's like, you know, been so prepared in his mother's grandma, all his cousins, like everybody just hanging on to his every word. This is his final big moment in the sun. And he gets up and he says, Baruch Atash, yeah. And okay, you're like, no, don't say that. Right? And the reason why he says Hashem is because he hasn't been practicing with Hashem's name. So I'm not going to put you through that bar mitzvah experience, and therefore I will use actual Shem Hashem, but I want to make clear the halachic facade behind that. Okay, and a Baruch goes as follows. Uh, before I do that, though, let me point out, you bow on Barhu, and then you come up as you say, Es Hashem, and then you bow again, but not as deeply, when you say, Baruch Hashem on Baruch Olamayim. So you would say as follows, Barhu Es Adonai HaMeboruch Baruch Adonai HaMeboruch Le'olam 
and now we're in Birchos Kriyashma. This is another example of where I would begin a little earlier. The custom is really to begin a little bit earlier. We begin by Uma Beryom, Na Beel Chayvik Hayom. Uma Beryom, Uma Bilo'ila, Uma Bil Beryom, Uma Bilo'ila, Adonai Tzavos Shemo, El Chayvik Hayom, Tamidim Locha Lena Lolom Boel, Baruch Ato Adonai, Hamariv Harobim. Next bracha. Ki heim chayenu v'yorech yomenu u'bahem nege yomom v'loi lo yavo secha al tasir mimenu liyolamim baruch ato Adonai o'ev amo Yisrael. We talked last week about being aware of what the people are doing behind you. And there are two important notes that have to do with this part of davening, one with the end of the bracha of Abbas Olam, and the, the next one having to do with Shema. The, the end of Abbas Olam, there are many that have the custom to say, along with the chazan, the end of the bracha, Baruch HaTah Hashem, Ohev HaMo Yisrael. The reason they do this is because there's a suffix whether or not the Amen at the end of the bracha, or following the bracha of Abbas Olam, would be a separation between that bracha and Shema. So therefore, some people, so as to avoid the need to say Amen, finish off that bracha together with the chazan, that way they don't have to answer Amen. Uh, there are some places where everybody does this, some places where nobody does this. So what I'd uh, suggest is, I usually sort of slow down a little bit now, you don't have to, you know, don't, don't like put this in your cheat sheet and bring it up, like, oh, you know, slow down, put a little stop sign sticker in your sitter, you don't need to be, uh, this is not like an extreme, um, important need for davening, but I think it's just helpful to know. Uh, I'll try to slow down a little bit until when I get to Baruch HaTashem. If I hear people uh, making, you know, making saying the Baruch HaTashem behind me, I'll kind of slow down and I'll tame down. So I won't like belt it out as if I normally would, uh, which would be, you know, sort of in a musical way. I, I just want to make sure that we can all stay together and I just slow down and say, Baruch HaTashem, Oeiv Amo Yisrael. In terms of Shema, this is uh, also an important thing to be aware of. There are some kehils where the Rav will begin saying Shema out loud. So everybody you know, covers their eyes with their right hand, and the, the Rav will begin Shema. There are some kehils where the Rav doesn't begin Shema, and everybody's sort of waiting on you to begin Shema. So if you're waiting on the Rav, and the Rav's, Rav's waiting on you, it, it's like a game of chicken. You, you'll never get your chicken soup that Friday night. So what I would recommend is I, I usually pause and I wait until there's like sort of a reasonable amount of time to see if the Rav is saying Shema. If he doesn't, then I'll say Shema myself. Uh, now, you know, there are plenty of places where everybody will just sort of jump in at their own pace and that's fine. Then, you know, you have your cue and you know what you're doing. But, uh, like I said, because it's common for the Rav to start or for the Hazan to start, I usually give the Rav a moment. If he doesn't jump in, I uh, hop in myself. <coughs> Uh, so what I do, certainly always do, is I say Shema out loud. You won't have to, because again, uh, most people will sort of say Shema anyways. I mean, that's what's there in the davening. But as your role, uh, part of your role as the Chazan is to guide people through the davening. So by saying Shema out loud, you sort of bring everybody in there together. I always do that. I always say Shema out loud in a voice that would allow people to hear me, even if they're, they themselves are saying Shema. I think it gives a nice form to the davening. Uh, obviously, Bar Hashem is quiet, and then you would uh, go through the three um, partios of Shema. Now, uh, in general, you are going to wait for the Rav to finish Shema when he finishes Shema. If the Rav is not in town, uh, you know, it's usually the assistant rabbi, or maybe some other important person, like in the yeshiva, they sort of had a pecking order. Now, if you want to know what the actual org chart of the yeshiva is, you just watch what happens when somebody's not there, who they wait on. They, that's how you figure it out. Like, oh, okay, he's the one who's boss. I get it. Um, so it just, you know, if you're in a yeshiva where there's that sort of formal structure, uh, it's just as good, you know, you scan the, the Mizrah wall, and you'll, you'll pretty soon figure out, you know, who it is that, that people are paying attention to. So Rabbi Lopiansky, Rabbi Reingold, Rabbi Merkin, Rabbi Katzis, you know, whoever might be in town if Rabbi Lopiansky is not around. Uh, in a shul, like I said, it's usually the rub, if not the rub, the assistant rabbi, and uh, if, not, if they're not up there, you're good to go. 
<coughs> except where you have a very small minion. It may happen that you have a minion where uh, some people, you know, you have, I don't know, maybe a dozen people or so, and you would want to try to bring about a minion together with you when you get to Shimon Asrei. The idea here is that you want to pace yourself because you need a minion for Shimon Asrei. So, if there's, you know, let's say, four or five people out of a group of 12 that take a long time for Shema, and you just finish off when, let's say, six people are done or whatever it is, then you're in trouble because by the time you get to Shema and Esrei, they're still way back in Shema, and then you actually need to wait for them until you have a full minion diving Shema and Esrei. So this is just a good pacing thing to be aware that you need a minion when it comes time for Shema and Esrei. Okay, Vamuna uh, Kolzos is where we begin. And uh, here again, I would just start where um, the, the diamond is. Umachuso beratzon kiblu aliyem Moshe el ben Israel chanu shira v'sim charabo v'amru chulam. Because we're doing this together, this is a, a point I just want to want to bring up. What typically happens here, and you'll see this happens at other points in Dominic, and I'll point it out when it does come up. This is the, one of the parts of davening where people sort of jump in. If you think about it in, in your sort of mind's eye, of when you say, uh, when you finish off, you can almost hear people saying, Now, there are two ways you can handle this. And either one works, I'll, I'll share with you what I do. You can either let them do the, the, the yelping, you know, let them get in and make the noise. Uh, or you can join together with them. I, my personal preference is always to join together with them because, as I said, I want them to feel that I'm together with them in this experience of dominating. And any sign that the Seaborg shows of being an active participant, I want to let them know, like, I'm right here with you. So what I would do is, and so on. And then yeah, I wait until people finish up. And then Yisrael. That's the end of the first bracha. After Shema, we now begin the second bracha, which is, which is Hashki Venu. And uh, the ending is Hushmar it says, Seinu Boeinu, Lechaim Elo Shalom, Matavi Adolam, Ufro Soleinu, Sukas Shalom Echo, Boruch Ata Adonai, Hapore Sukas Shalom Aleinu. Yalkamo Israel, Fial Yerushalayim. Vishamru. Question, question, question. So, yes. Before you get to the, to the end, Vishmort Seisenu. Yeah. What before that, from Hashem Zayn Alon, are you actually vocalizing, or are you just not? No, no, no. no, no, no. no. You, the only time I vocalize is if I'm in a Tzibor where it's like deadly silent, huh. and you, you feel like you're at a funeral. That, that, I don't like that sound of like an empty shell, like an entire seaboard and no noise. Um, it just, it, it feels very off. So uh, when I do that, I'll, I'll just sort of make noise to let people know, hey, we're dying. Like the lights are on. <laughs> um, but otherwise, no, I'll just you know, go ahead. Um, question. Was there, I thought there was a question. No? Okay. Uh, Ms. Shemmer. So uh, there is, there are three ways to do Ms. Shemmer. Uh, the, the most standard kind of a way is when you finish the bracha of Hashkivenu, you're silent. The Tzibur says Hashamru, and then you finish off by saying, and the way you would do it is, you, you don't start formally, you just sort of slide in. So as people are saying it, and things kind of quiet down, you say, <laughs> The second way of doing things, um, and again, this is if you like to sing, and you know, 
you, you, uh, you think that Seaport would like to hear you. Um, something you can do is there's a very, very standard Nusach of Bishamru. Uh, this is not like, you know, Krabachian or some new age. It's a fairly standard type of Nusach where the Chazan sings the entire Bishamru. So after the Tzibur says Bishamru, the Chazan would say Bishamru. And I'll, I'll sing that for you the way that goes. Bishamru b'nei Yisrael es ha-shabos l'hasos es ha-shabos l'dorosom b'rit z'olom b'ni u'b'n b'nei Yisrael o'si li'olom ki sheishes yomim I always do this if I'm not doing the third option. Uh, so if I'm, if this is just a seaboard that reads through Vishamru, I'll do that Vishamru. I think it's beautiful and it leads very well into the Kaddish. Uh, now, the other way to do this is, and it's becoming more popular in many shuls. So even shuls that are not doing the Karbach minion will sing with Shamru to the tune of Karbach's quick Mimkompa. You may be aware Karbach has two versions of Mimkompa. Uh, there's the Mimkompa, okay. And then there's like this out there, I'm sorry, yeah, version of Mimkompa which goes, oh, yeah, Mimkompa. That's my go to tune for Kedusha on Shabbos Day. Uh, it's really crazy. And I spent a lot of time learning it. Um, I actually, incidentally, just this is completely neither here nor there, just something I want to share with you. I know these tunes fairly well, but I think I mentioned to you last week that my father told me when I was less than 10 years old, listen to the chazan. It'll be really helpful to learn how to daven. So I've been listening to the chazan since I was a kid. And I've been listening to the chazan with the thought of learning how to daven from listening to the chazan. The other thing is, I spend a lot of time learning tunes. I genuinely do. There is a Baruch Kelelian, a beautiful Hasidish Baruch Kelelian that I really wanted to learn, and I couldn't get it, no how. No, no way, no how. I was driving up to Montreal for my cousin's wedding. I, I was driving up for a reason. My wife couldn't come with me. She was working. I was driving from a conference in New York, and I think it was like from the time I crossed the border until I parked at the wedding, I was playing that song on a loop and just sing along until I got it. So I really do invest time in tunes that are a little bit more difficult to get. Um, you know, don't, you know, if it takes you time, that's fine. It takes me time too. I didn't pick these up by osmosis, uh, even though I am Aussie. Um, but <laughs> I, uh, it, there's a, a wonderful compilation called Chaim Tish. Chaim Tish is, uh, I think it was a musical arranger in Israel who came up with the idea of, oh, we have all these beautiful Hasidic tunes, but they're just, they're not really professionally produced. So people don't know them or don't really enjoy them because they're not sung. And well, yeah, people sing them on Shabbos, but the way that people sort of sing on Shabbos around a davening, it it's not, doesn't have the quality of professional music. So he took some of the best Hasidic tunes out there and he produced them in an album that he called L'chaim Tish. Uh, it's L'chaim, Lamed, Ches, Yud, Yud, Mem, Tish, Tuf, Yud, Shen. I'll tell you, I discovered this. I was walking in Gugula uh, many years ago, and I heard this amazing music outside of a photo store. So I came in, and the guy was like, can I help you? I said, yes, I want your music. Where, where did you get this? What is this? Yeah. So he said, oh, sure. Uh, it's this thing called L'chaim Tish. So I went right down the block to uh, the uh, music store. I forget what it's called, like right there off uh, Shabbos Square, like right next to the big candy shop. There's like this great Galpaz. That's the name of it. And I said, I want L'chaim Tish. So by now, they've had, they created, I think, a four CD set of these L'chaim Tish songs. And they have like L'chaim Tish for the High Holidays, L'chaim Tish for Kanika, L'chaim Tish for Perm, uh, L'chaim Tish for your little cousin's boss mitzvah. So, I mean, they've got L'chaim Tish for everything. Uh, so highly recommended. I, I just love the music, love the tunes. Um, OK, so the, the, uh, going back to Kravach and the quick Mimkompa. The, uh, the quicker Kravach Mimkompa, as I said, is is fairly common for people to sing all together for Shamu to that tune. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to sing that for you uh, because, like I said, chances are you'll be in a seaboard that will do this. 
Most often, the uh, Gabbai will tell you when you get up there if they sing the Shamru. Certainly, if you ask them, do you guys do anything special, they will let you know if you do, if they do the Shamru. Um, but it's worthwhile to learn because, like I said, it's becoming fairly common. And the truth is, even if the Tzibur doesn't do it, most often they won't kill you if you do it. Now, there are certain things that if you do, you'll get ridden out on a rail. So if you try Krabach Nusuf, and it means that isn't doing Krabach Nusuf, you, you can really get yourself up and, and get yourself in hot water. If you're looking for a great way never to dump the oven again, <laughs> it's like one of those, you know, go to like one of these speedster, you know, Indy 500 Minyanum and, and like a New York Stiebel, and then try Krabach Nusuf. Guarantee you'll never do that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but like, well, no, they won't want you to dump it because, because you try, you because you try try to shut things out, yeah, and yeah, they, yeah, they've got their chickens away. Um, and so, but as I said, the is it's beautiful, and most people know it, so you can certainly get away with it. Yeah. Next is Kaddish. Uh, and you do this Kaddish, actually, to uh, a Shabbos tune. I'll, I'll <coughs> sing that for you. Yisrael. <laughs> Agalovis man karivim ruamein Yeheish mirabo mevarach Veolam ulome yomayo Ki isparach ishabach Isparach 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 Amen. Quick note about Yehesh Me Rabba, because I think this is the first Kaddish that we're going through. The, the proper way to do Yehesh Me Rabba is that you should say it. You should say it while the Tzibor is saying it, but towards the end of when they're saying it. So if you're waiting until they're all done and then you say Yehesh Me Rabba, you've waited too long. If you don't say it, you're missing something. So what you want to do is, yeah, you should wait until towards the end and then say it so you're finishing as the seaboard is done, and then you begin with Yisparach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and that leads us up to Shemot Asrei. Um, so I'm going to take five minutes or seven minutes or so. We're just going to be quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Any questions up until now? Okay. Uh, um, yes. Yes, in some places, doesn't the husband wait until the period is done and then repeat it? But as far as I know, that's wrong. They, they're not supposed to do that. They're supposed to say Yehesh Me Rabbah together with the Tzibur. Mm -hmm. And then they start to use Barach and so on. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, but yes. For Yehesh Me, what I do is I, I'll start saying it with them, but I say it fairly slowly so that. It, yeah, that's another way to do it. Yeah, sort of like dry it up. So same uh, same principle, right? So you're you're finishing it at the same time as they're done. So you shouldn't start like a couple beats after they start. You should not do that. Is that what's okay? No. That's fine. That's what I did. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I, I I let them go for a little bit, and I say you know sort of that. But but either one works. Yes. It's also a difference of opinion of saying these barak. Um. um. There's a tune where it's more where it encourages the congregation to yis Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think that that's just like a tune thing. I don't know that that's really a minute. 
Um, although I, I don't think it's a problem. I don't believe that well, how long could there be any issue with saying Yisbara? I mean, it's not a Shem's name. Uh, you know, it's funny. I actually haven't spoken to Roy Rosen about it or any other project. Um, right, but that's also typically that wouldn't be in a Friday night davening. That would be like in the kedusha that would come after davening, because that's the one we do. That's, that tune is the one that encourages Yisbara, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't use that here. Uh, because the tune that you're using here is the Kedusha for after Shabbos Mar. Okay. By Echulu, uh, Echulu, which is in Hebrew on page uh, 154. Uh, two conditions should be met before you begin by Echulu. One is that the rabbi is done. So if the rabbi is there, you want to make sure that they're done Nishman Asri. Unless, in the very rare situation where a rabbi will tell you, begin without me. Uh, so it almost never happens in a shul because you know, Rabbanim are usually practical. They know that the Tzibor is waiting for them, so they'll finish, and uh, you'll continue um, at what, when they're done. Um, if, let's say, for example, you're in yeshiva or whatever, if the person tells you, you know, just start without me, then you're fine to start. But you do need a minion. Uh, so what you would do is it's the, yeah, just one moment. You would want to make sure to have both conditions met, that the rabbi is done and that you have a minion behind you. Uh, if there's no rabbi, then obviously you just wait for a minion and you're good to go. Yes? When the rabbi signs, is it, do you start, as soon as he starts taking three steps back and takes his bows, or do you give him a little time after that, say you read some? <laughs> That's a good question. You know, this is a question I've wondered uh, very often. Um, I usually, I, and there's, uh, I haven't looked in any safe for the like, right? what I usually do is I give him enough time so that he, he'll be able to catch up easily. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, you know, as soon as he steps back, I give him just another few moments. And oh, I, right, yeah. I don't think the best answer for that is, gee, how long did that rabbi really take? Well, I mean, it, it, is, a, it is a few moments, and I'll tell you where it makes, where it feels like it's making more of a difference is where you're beginning chazars and shots, because yeah. then he might miss Baruch Hu from home, you know. So I usually just take a little bit of time. Uh, okay, so we talked about Vayachulu. Now, important, very important halacha to know, and I, and I think this is maybe a lesser known halacha. The bracha me'en sheva, which is a minute to add on Shabbos, the reason this was done is because the bate knesios used to be in uh, dangerous places. They were farther outside of the city, and uh, on uh, Shabbos, nobody was out in the field, nobody was outside, everybody was in their homes. So people who would take longer to Davin Shemun Esrei, if everybody had left, they would have to walk home by themselves. So the minig was uh, done, the minig was created to add this bracha, bracha me'in sheva, which is a condensation of Shemun Esrei, like a mini Chazar Shatz, to give people who were Davin Shemun Esrei more time to be able to finish their davening, and that way they'd be able to walk home safely with the rest of the Sefer, yes? Just to go back to Vayifula for a second. Everybody does that together, and do you just say the last few words again out loud? Or? Oh, yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that. I actually left that out. Um, so what you do is you start people off. And then they'll go in. And then what I'll typically do is I'll pick up towards the end. So I'll say, And I'll say, and that'll go right into the Brahma and Shabbat. Baruch HaTashem, and so on and so forth. Um, so, right, so back to the Brahma and Shabbat. The, the minute, therefore, as I said, because it's built around people who, yeah, yeah, no, no. because it's built around people who are in a seaboard, is only said, the Brahma and Shabbat is only said when you're in a seaboard, uh, in a place where there's a regular minion. So let's say, as an example, you're celebrating a Shabbat promise and you're in a catering hall, and you're davening you know, off to the side of the hall, you would not say bracha mein sheva. Or let's say, for example, you know, you're, you're at somebody's home where there's no regular minion for a Friday night. I'm not talking about like a, a little shtiebel, but I'm talking about where there's no regular minion. It snows in the air. Right, exactly, exactly, in a situation like that. So you would not say bracha mein sheva. You'd go directly from the end of Ayahulu to Aleinu. Um, so the bracha mein sheva, yeah. Do you bow in this bracha Hashem? Okay, so this is, uh, I was hoping nobody would ask. Uh, <laughs> this is something, I, I actually, I, I don't know. I'll tell you what I, I see do. most people don't seem to do it, but I don't know if that's correct or not. Right, neither. right. You know, I always kind of wonder. I mean, it's, it's a main Sheva. It's a condensation of Shemun Asrei. So you would think 
that you should bow. So I sort of bow. I, I say sort of Baruch mm -hmm. uh, Although I, I don't know that I'm right. I really have to ask that question. It, but thanks for flagging me. I think it's legitimate to do that. It, it would seem so. I've but, seen but, it by people who should know. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I think Stuart is right. There are a lot of people that don't do it, which, you know, and then that's why I myself have had that, that uh, question mark. It's something I haven't resolved. Okay. Okay. Embarrassingly, we'll have, to, we'll have to redact that from the record. <laughs> this is a, a room that has former government employees, so you know, I'm sure you can send it to the appropriate people to get scrubbed. Nobody will ever have to know. My kids will still get married, definitely. Okay, so um, uh, the Bracha Bein Sheva. There are two ways to do this. One is uh, going straight through, and the much more common way is to wait at the end of Kone Shemayim Ba'aretz, let the Tzibor say Mogain Avos, and then after they say it, you say Yelokein Avokei Avosena. So if they do go straight through, as an example, the Yeshiva Shar Yashiv in Farakwe, they go straight through. Not common, but they do it. They'll probably let you know. Uh, the other time in which I go straight through is with, if I'm with a Tzibor that I know doesn't really know Mogain Avos. So as an example, when I dive in for the Yomit at 6 to 9, and the people that are there are typically not completely familiar with davening, I'll just go straight through because I know if I go quiet at Kodesh and Lamba Arts, it's going to get really awkwardly silent. So it's fine to continue on. You don't have to stop. And if it's going to be put that kind of a challenge to the seaboard, and they really could use your help to daven along with them in saying Magena Vos, then I would just go straight through. So if you have a situation, again, where who knows, if you're, you're with less, less observant family members or you know, people who just don't know the davening as well, that's what I would recommend. And uh, this is how it goes. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu v'hei avoseinu Elohei Abraham Elohei Yitzchak v'hei Yaakov Ha'el Adonai Gibor Banora Elion Konei Shamayim Baaretz And then you either are silent or you continue on Magid Abos Bid Baro Mechayei Meisim Imamaro Ha'el Akadosh Hei Gamo Ha'miniach Le'amo Biyom Shabbos Kacho Yivam ratzal l'aniach lohem, b'fanav nabo b'ro b'fachad, b'no delishmo b'cho yom tamid, m'yein abrofos. El ha'odos adon ha'shalom ekadesh ha'shabos, u'mevarech shibi u'miniyat v'ikdusho, l'hamadu shnei yoneg. Zecher l'masei d'reishis, Elohim v'lehav oseinu r'tei v'nu chaseinu, Hadashen v'mitzvot secho, v'sein chalkinu b'sorot secho, Sabeinu v'itu v'echo, v'samchinu v'ishu v'secho, V'tahir l'ibeinu lo v'cho v'emez, V'yam chileinu anu l'ehinu b'avo v'rotzon, Shabbat z'kachecho, V'yonu chuvo, Yisrael m'kachei shemecho, V'ruch atavu noi, v'kadesh ha'shabos. Something uh, that I could have pointed out only one time earlier, but I think it's valuable to point out now, and that is you may have noticed the gray box for Aser Sameh Tshuva, where you say Hamel HaKadosh instead of Hakel HaKadosh. There are certain times of the year when, it, when davening gets tricky and there's a lot of gotcha moments. One of those is Aser Sameh Tshuva. Actually, one of the most difficult davenings of the year is Mincha davening on Tzom Bidalia because it's a serious and mechuva, and it's a timus. So... What are you saying, what are you pointing out that it's what? It's, a it's, it's a, during the serious and mechuva, yeah. and it's a fast day. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that you have to add into davening. You have to add um, all of the additions um, for Rosh Hashanah, for the serious and mechuva. Um, and remember, this is the first day after Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. So on Rosh Hashanah, we, none of us, like so most of us, don't worry about the davening, because you know, there's sort of like the professional guy who's doing davening in Shul. So the first day when civilians are davening for the Yamid of Aser Sameh Tshuva is Tzom Gedalia. And now suddenly it's like, oh wow, you've got Micha Mocha and, and uh, Amel HaKadosh instead of HaKel HaKadosh. Yeah. And then on top of that you have Amenu and you have uh, the um, uh, Avinu Malkeinu. So there are certain days where, like I said, there are a lot of gotcha oh, yeah. moments. Those days are Aser Sameh Tshuva, uh, the um, Cholamoid. Cholamoid can be challenging. Uh, there are a bunch of additions that are part of Hall Moed Davening. So we say, um, if you're Davening Shacharis, we say Yal Yavo. Um, on uh, Shemini Atzeris, the Davening is different up until Yishtabach. So th it's important to know that if, if it's like a special day, Rosh Chodesh even, you know, that there's no, let's say, for example, um, 
ashray in between ashray and Avalu Sion. There's no Lama uh, and that's all. So it's just important to be aware of this. If it happens to be one of those days, you, you want to make sure that you've like sort of navigated all those gotcha moments. Now, I'm actually terrible at this. I, I have like a really bad, I told my wife, like, there are certain parts of my brain, for example, the part of my brain that stores names. There's a, a big piece of chalet right on top of it, <laughs> and I can't access So for some reason, these little things, I'm like constantly forgetting them. It really, it like requires a lot of attention for me, even, during, even though I'm very experienced, but like during a service of me, and right, you know, to remember all these little details, not easy, so I have to stay on top of myself. Key on some dads are stopping fast. <laughs> right, no, I did it. It's fine. <laughs> it's a fast day. Uh, oh, that's even. Before class, we were talking about the Rusty Brick Sidur, which is an app, an app for your cell, or your smartphone. Yeah. And it knows what day of the week it is, and it gives you all these things all there, and it highlights them. Is it inappropriate to use your cell phone to daven from from the? Yeah, that's and, a fair question. I never, Friday night. I never. Yes, it's Friday night. Wouldn't be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, some good daven. Technically speaking, um, I never use my cell. Phone. I mean, I have. Uh, a, a sitter on my phone, I have a sitter on my watch. I never use um, either of them at the moment, ever. Uh, I, I actually try to avoid, if possible, using it in show, like if I, you know, if I step in late or whatever and I can't get a sitter, then I'll use my phone. The reason why is because, unfortunately, the reality is that some people use their phones for things other than dominating and show, which to me, it's like, it just seems very shameful, you know, and you can't wait for a few minutes or email the news. Um, so I don't want to create any situation where there would be a sense of like impropriety. Mm -hmm. So even just the sense that like while I have my phone, and obviously you know when I'm davening for the Ahmed, I, I, I'm clearly looking at the words. I mean I, I'm actually really smart and talented if I'm multitasking, you know, reading the news, <coughs> catching up on the scores, and davening for the Ahmed at the same time. <laughs> so let's hope. And while I'm davening, I'm actually davening. Um, but where where I am concerned is, let's say for example while I'm waiting for people to finish my S-ray. So I have my phone up there, what am I doing? Now, I'm not doing anything, mm -hmm. but there's just, there's a certain look that right. I, I, I feel is just like not respectful, so I, I stay away from it. Yeah. Do you have notes in your, in your city, or do you write, do you write notes? So, Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, I have copious notes. Yeah. I mean, I have, like, my sitters all scribbled up with, like, musical notations. I don't read music, but I have, like, my own symbols that work for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a lot of, like, tune, which tune I'm gonna use for what, um, backup tunes, I have pauses, like we're in davening, like let's say for example, I'm doing a song, and, and this could be practical, you know, for people, you know, because let's say for example, when it comes to Kedusha, I've done tunes many, many times, so I don't have to write anything in for myself, but had I not, I would. That is, let's say I know in Kedusha I'm doing, you know, one low and two highs. So what I'll actually put is, I'll put, you know, an L, for the low part, and I'll put commas and a period, and then I'll put H and H for where the two high parts start. So I, I really do map that out for myself completely. Yeah, totally. I mean, if you see my monster, it's uh, I'm hoping that uh, after 120 years, like some Jewish museum is going to put that in a glass case. <laughs> very famous, I hope. Yeah. Is there any? Is any? Someone suggested there's an issue of a hefsek with my gain eyeballs by doing it that way. It always appears that way to me. Because it, it takes a rel relative, you know, nice amount of time <coughs> for the call to go through, and the father is just standing there, he's not saying anything. Is that ever yeah. an issue? So, so I'll tell you, you know, it's an interesting thing. I, I, I never, I can't say that I've seen anything in my, my learning of our time um, that discusses this. I would guess that anything that has to do with the davening is not a half sick. That's generally the principle that we say, let's say, as an example. Uh, the question is asked, why is it that when we begin Shimon Esrei, uh, we say Hashem Svasai Tiptach Viyagit Tilasecha, right? We say this pasuk, mm -hmm. but we're supposed to be so much Gula Lutfila. Gemara Bracha says that we're supposed to bring Shmon Esrei immediately into contact with Gula in the last bracha of uh, davening. Is Shkibenu or you know Mar Shem has to do with Gula. So how do we create any hesed, or for that matter, how do we say Vishamru or in Yantam, How do we say by Yadaver Moshe or on Rosh Hashanah Tiku? Be, the answer that's given, the Mar talks about this, is because it's all part of the davening, and therefore it doesn't create a hafsek. So I would assume it's not a hafsek. Why it is that uh, there's this response of reading, I don't know. Like, I don't know when the meaning developed that the Tzibur would say the middle part, they wouldn't say the beginning, they wouldn't say the end. I, I couldn't tell you. Okay. Um, now, you are up to, so we're finished with uh, the Brahmi and Shepha, and we're up to Kaddish. 
Um, the Kaddish that I do here is sort of like the, the plain vanilla Kaddish, which uh, goes, Skadal vi skadash, me rabo, yoma di rof, you say, va mitma who say, the chayefon, uvi mechon, vayem, for base Israel, by the love is man, karib, in Romain, yehesh, me rabo, me barach, the lamo me, oh my yo, yis barach, vi shabach, vi spar, vi shaman, vi sna se, vi sador, vi sala, vi sala, o shme de kuchabrit hu, le va min kolbir, chasovich, your sot, chasavin echmosot, and your own bama, in Romain. He's Gabel to the son of our son, the whole Israel, Kadamaba on Divishma, Vimru Amen, Yehesh Lama Rabba Mishma, I have a high Malayan about Koy Israel, Vimru Amen. Three steps back, one, two, three. O Seshalom, Vimru Amen to the left, Kuya Seshalom, Aleinu to the right, Yah Koy Israel, Vimru Amen, with a bow in front of you. Insider tip here if uh, you want to make some friends in the seaboard, uh, this is a nice opportunity to throw in a tune. So let's say, for example, you are davening for a family, simple, there's a shell cross or whatever it is. You could do Tiskabel to like some uh, uh, wedding tune, like Tiskabel Saloso, Nubiusa. So I, you know, when I'm in a setting where I know people enjoy singing, this is a great opportunity to add a little bit of music to the end of davening that gives people a little sparkle in their eye and spring in their step as they go out of shul. Yeah, was there a question? Oh, yeah, well, I have a Okay, and we are now up to Kiddush. Yes, question. <clears throat> On the Kaddish, um, you, you did a minor key, right? You used a minor key. Yes. But I hear some Kaddish where they use a more of a major key. And a yeah, so I'm trying to think. I, you know, I'm trying to think about the uh, sort of uh, what do you mean minor key on the... Well, the, the, the major would be Yiskadah v'kadash me'i rabah P'yamah d'yirah v'yirah 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 So, it, I think it probably just... The other place where this is done is in Shabbos davening, right at the end of the uh, Shachris, before you take out the Shema Nasra, the Sefer Torah, it's the same Kaddish. Yiskadah v'kadash me'i rabah Now, I, I think probably I just do a different nusach, like I just do a different tune. Um, I, I didn't grow up with that uh, the, that major kaddish. I think that major kaddish is more sort of like a young Israel nusach. Um, I was I grew up as a kid in yeshiva, and I think the yeshivas tend to do it in a minor. Uh, so it's a it's a, a very observant point. I think those are equivalent kaddishes. You would use them each in the same way. So if, for example, you're more accustomed to that kaddish, that's the kaddish you would do here. And so on. Um, Kiddush and Shul. Uh, yes, question, question. question. I was taught that that regular davening, Shimon Esrei, the Kaddish of the Kiddush, is in a minor key. And you do a transition to majors and break us first way up, mashallah, and then you, the Kaddish is a major key. Uh, even at the end of the davening? It's not a transition when you get to I'm sorry. You go from a minor to a major. In the middle of Kaddish? No, at the end. No, at the end of Shimon Esrei. The end of Sim Shalom. Oh, okay. So, from, interesting. Okay, yeah, it could be. Next rock, you go from the minor mode, Shabbos mode, right, to a major, and then when you go into Kaddish, the Kaddish, you're in a major key. Sure. So I'll tell you, if you would go to the Bell School of Music, or you would ask Sherwood Goffin, I'm almost sure that that's exactly what he would do. Um, but I didn't go to the Bell School of Music. Not even the Bells or School of Music. Yeah, so th this is what I've always done, and it's purely common. So, uh, you know, if you go to uh, davening in, in, like, many sort of, like, more, I guess, black hat type places, that's what you'll hear. Um, it might not be musically spot on, but that's just sort of what, what the customer version has. Yeah? I think with that, that cottage in, in the major, I, I never knew the terms major, minor, but... But sometimes you have an issue. You go seshlo mirma, kuya seshlo, malena mokli shalvi, vimaru amen, which I think really isn't correct, right? Because you're supposed to say amen first, and then the kahal is supposed to say it. No, actually, with with that vimaru, you're all supposed to say it together. Oh, that is okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> some people do it. Right, right, right. No, it's really supposed to be vimaru. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the uh, uh, our rabbi taught us the other way. He he came up to me specifically and said, "No, don't do it that way. Do be amen, and then they'll say amen." I've also heard it. 
That's the rabbi right. Feldman oh, really? in Atlanta from the pulpit said to say on me, and then the congregation. Oh wow! Okay, so this might be misinformation. I'm really sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. That's why it's written that way in the in the art school center. Right. You know. No. 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 You know what? So I. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I'm thinking about it the way we guys are learning. Right. No. It's true. It's true. Right. I made a mistake. Um, that right. The, the, that Imru Amain is that, well, right. That, take take yeah. Time. Right. Can we do that? <laughs> So uh, the question has come up as to how well, you know, based on the psyche where I film in Atlanta and, and what everybody knows to be the truth after all. <laughs> okay, uh, but, but I'm learning a lot myself here. Okay, the Kiddush in, uh, in Shul. There are different customs. Some Minyanim don't do Kiddush at all. Uh, some Minyanim have a, 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 somebody who's designated to do the Kiddush, as I think is the practice here at Chumri. Mm -hmm. And then some Minyanim have the Chazan do Kiddush. In the event that you're expected to do Kiddush, uh, you might be expected to go someplace to do Kiddush. Like you might be diving for the Amud, you know, at the Amud and they do Kiddush at the Beam or whatever it is. So just like be aware. Uh, and sometimes they'll just bring the wine to you. Uh, now something that's really important to remember is that it's easy to get thrown with the Kiddush and Shul because the Kiddush that we're used to on Shabbos be begins with Vayachulu. I remember I, I once got out there, this is many years ago, at, at uh, Pnei Jacob Shari Zion. Baltimore, and I started saying by a hulu, and I got that. You know, like, oh, right, it's not even here. What am I doing? I'm just trying to say kiddish, guys. Yeah. What's the matter? Right. So it's, it's just important to be aware um, that there is no by a hulu. We just begin with sabri. Oh. And uh, therefore, um, it, I typically go into like sort of a shulness of kiddish rather than the kiddish that I do at home because that, that, that form just seems to fit better with this kiddish. So I would do it as follows. Well. Safri, Marnam, Rabbanam, Rabbasai, Baruchat Adonai, Elohim, Melcholom, Borei, Priyagafen, Baruchat Adonai, Elohim, Melcholom, Asher, Kiddishon, Mitzvah, Sove, Rotsavonu, Bishabas, Kocho, Beavo, Broton, in Chilonu, Zikaron, Masev, Rishis, Kihu, Yom Techila, Lemikroi, Kodesh, Zecher, Viti Asmi Troyim. And typically people join in here. I, I, you can't beat him, join him. Kivonu Bacharto, Yosonu Kidashto, Mikol Hamim, Vishabas Kotchiko, Yahavo Virotonim, Kaltonu, Boruchatadunoi, Nikadesh. Hashabos. And then we are on to Elenu. Uh, if the Sibor sings the first part of Elenu, and you'll know that because you'll hear them sing. So then, when they sing it, if they go silent by al kein which is fairly common, even for a Sibor that does the first part out loud, when I finish, I would finish with if the Tzibur doesn't sing Elenu, so then the, the ending for Elenu is So, fairly standard, not that different than the way we do it during the week. Uh, and then there's Kaddish Yesom. So, you don't do this Kaddish, the Yesom does the Kaddish. Some Tzibur Right, have the mimic to do a dumbalum, some do yigdal. Uh, you know, you'll you'll know very quickly because I will they'll kick you out and they'll put some kid who gets up to your knees to do the the uh, the dumbalum and yigdal or so on, or they'll start singing it themselves. Um, but that should be something that's fairly easy to pick up. And with that, we are done with. All of Friday night dominating. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yes. You sort of did things in this sort of tenor, but what if you're a bare base? That's fine. Yeah, you can just transpose. Yeah, it's it's really fine. So long as the note progressions are the same. Yeah, you can totally get away with that. Um, that yeah, that's just sort of my voice. But uh, there are times like when I have a cold or whatever, I'll definitely go more to a baritone. Um, mm -hmm. 
And there, there are many keywords. I also, you know, um, in a fairly standard seaboard, um, I'll know that I'll have enough distribution that will hit my high notes, that I can do those. But if I see that people are struggling with my high notes, I'll intentionally go down to a baritone. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I, I want them to be able to sing along. But that's completely mm -hmm. acceptable. Next Monday, what, we, what is the subject on? Or next Monday we meet? Uh, yeah. Next Monday, I believe we're on again. Right. Right. And uh, we are going to be doing uh, Shabbos morning. Okay, right. okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Question? Yeah, I, I just want to make um, one of the things that, uh, that I do typically at the end of a lane, because it is a Kaddish Yatom, <coughs> in case there's anybody who's saying Kaddish who hasn't quite, who is not quite up, I back up a sentence. So I start Kakatu uh, Oh, to give them a little to, to more time? Them, to give them those extra couple of seconds to catch up. So that would oh, start to yeah. get Sure, that's oh, helpful. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Yes, question. And I'll get to you. What about repeating words? Right. right. Good question. So here's the deal. La uh, halacha, when it comes to something like, let's say, lachadodi, I think we talked about this last week, like saying lachadodi twice, it's a piyut. It's really just like a liturgical poem. It's fine to say it twice. This is actually a pasuk. By Yashem and Melchah Kalash, by Maria, is a pasuk from Navi. And ideally, a person should not repeat things. But here's the thing. You can't do it. It's not usher. So the, the approach that I take is, if I'm in a tzibur where, where I hear people are repeating things, where I know they're almost certain to repeat things, I don't want to make a statement like, I'm holier than thou. I, do, I don't repeat things. You guys repeat, but that's not me. I'm like... I do things the right way. Mm -hmm. So it, I just repeat. Um, if I had a choice, I certainly wouldn't repeat. But it, uh, it sounds awkward when you don't repeat, uh, especially in a crowd that does repeat. So that's, that's the approach that I always take. If I know people are repeating, I repeat. If I can get away with not repeating, I won't. Question? So it's more comment, but I guess give you a chance to comment. I've seen many shuls between Vermont Likin and um, Barfu that they switch from davening at like an Ahmed to Bima or yes, you know, yes, 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 very yeah. common. The reason why this was done is to demonstrate that the Kabbalah Shabbos is not actually part of davening. It is a Kabbalah Shabbos because it came, a Kabbalah Shabbos was only written about 500 years ago. I had a funny experience. I was in Europe at the Alta Neuschel in Prague. Some of you may have been there. And it, I believe, is the oldest shul in Europe, certainly the oldest shul that's in you know, been in fairly consistent use. I remember uh, sitting there with a group of students. We were on a trip to Poland, and, and we stopped off in Prague on our way out. And th there was a beautiful Kabbalah Shabbos. And I remember looking up at this yeah. beautiful Gothic stone structure, thinking to myself, wow, like, I can only imagine what Kabbalah Shabbos was like when this show was built. And then I realized there was no Kabbalah Shabbos when this show was built. It was built in, I think, the 13th century. No Kabbalah Shabbos. Yeah. So to demonstrate that Kabbalah Shabbos is not part of the davening, people, well, many, most seaboards have that, oh, just about everyone I know, has the medic to the daven Kabbalah Shabbos from the Bima, and then the the, the, the uh, Balfil will come up and finish at the end. The only time I've seen that the person stays at the Bima is there are some seaboards in which the uh, all the davening takes place at the Bima. So in that case, you just kind of stay there because it's right. But otherwise, to make that demarcation, thanks for pointing it out. Okay, thanks again, everybody. It's been great to uh, be with you again. Nice I look forward to seeing you next month. Are you in the I am not.